Hello YouTube community and welcome to another, you know, coffee clutch with Henning and Dennis. Hello. Episode one of probably never again, so episode one of one. Well, whatever. Hi. Um, what's happening is this numbnut, Dennis, um, he called me out of the blue and said, hey, we talked about amps last week and he had a little transistor modeling Fender G deck, which was great. It's a killer amp for, you know, practicing at home and all this. And he's got a um, Jet City 100 watt amp in the practice room, but he wanted something small for home. So he asked me, what should I get? And as if I know shit, I'm just, you know, I'm just winging it. I'm like, hey, you should get the more and you should try that. And, uh, you know, just talking out of my ass. Yeah, so, but the uh, more wasn't metal enough for me. So I bought the orange one and the Huden Kettner one too. Yeah, so he just had to go nuts and actually order three. And then he asked me, hey, which one should I get? And so he comes over and I said, hey, if he's here anyway with three amps, if I didn't film that, you wouldn't like that. So here we are. We're filming. The setup he wants is a simple setup, not loud, that's important, for home, but still have tubes and have the experience of, you know, developing tone because he has none <laughs> every time i tell him oh that sounds really good clean he's like who plays clean no one needs clean yeah that's correct because because he's an idiot you know what? So my student <laughs> yeah you're an idiot <laughs> no i mean you know an amp needs to be clean why doesn't amp need to be clean if you play heavy stuff well because a good clean sound is a good vehicle for pedals so my idea was get an amp that sounds good clean and put some cool pedals in front of it because we all know pedals are dope <laughs> they are the shit Okay, so I told him to get the more Little Monster AC, which, by the way, more people. Coco, Jason, all you people at more, I'm still waiting for mine. It would be very, very lame if he had one before I did. So um, I played this in China, I played it in Frankfurt. I actually think it's a very, very good 5-watt clean amp that ha that's a great basis for pedals in front of it. But Dennis went ahead and he ordered the Hughes and Kettner Tubemeister 5 which of course looks awesome and it's in a different category also price wise but now for some reason it dropped in price and it's actually exactly the price of the more um and then we he because i don't know why he got the <laughs> <coughs> orange micro terror um which is a, a little bit different uh, different concept and then i told him get a 112 speaker because 110 sometimes sound maybe a little bit too tinny and you don't need more than 112 really. So he got a 100 dollars, 100 euro? Yeah, 98, a little less. 90, 98 euro <coughs> Jet City that's loaded with an eminence and a 16 ohm. And what I actually saw on the back, it has an XLR out, and you might have seen that in the slideshow in the video. Um, it has an XLR out, which is a mic simulation. We're not going to try that. I, I don't necessarily believe in the direct sound. We put mics in front of it. That sounds good. But the point is, the speaker has that option. And for 98 bucks for a 112 eminence loaded with a simulated out, not bad. Now let's look at the options on the amps. Dennis, what can the Micro Terror do? It can do metal. It cannot do metal. <laughs> then why have I ordered it? I do not know. <laughs> so but Jim Root plays one. It, he, well, not the Micro Terror, but the yeah, bigger one. Wh which one is that? I have no idea. Well, exactly. It's black. it's black. White doesn't do metal. Black does metal. Black, metal, white, not metal. It is named Terror. It has to do metal. Y yeah, no. <laughs> okay, no. The Jim Root actually has his own version of the Dark Terror, which is a variation of the Tiny Terror. Um, and I played the Dark Terror, not the Jim Root version. Um, also like a three-knob amp. It can do metal. It's an amazing 15 watt metal amp that is very, very simple and with one tone knob you can do many things. The concept of the Micro Terra, as far as I understand it, is it's a hybrid amp. So no power amp, uh, no tube power... Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, always. Okay. Well, then we continue. <laughs> it only has one uh, 12AX7, ECC83, whatever little tube in the preamp and no power amp tubes it's uh, either digital or uh, a class d amp or a um, transistor i don't know but concept is incredibly small 20 watt so it can get quite loud 
It's actually the loudest one of the three, even so it's small. It's so small you can carry it easily anywhere you go. And um, it has you know, no FX loop, none of these have. Um, actually comes with a little power block here, so it, it doesn't actually take the cable right into it. And um, a minimum 4 ohm, so you can put any kind of speaker on it. Concept's very straightforward. It's got a phone's output, so it's nice for practicing at home. You can actually plug phones into it. It's got an aux in for your MP3 player and stuff like this. So it's definitely a, let's call it, high-class tube practice amp. That's the, the general idea. You might be able to actually play gigs with it. 20 watt might be loud enough, but it's not 20 tube watt. Be careful with that, you know? Transistor watt, tube watt, they, they give you different volumes. 20 watt tube uh, amp will crush this. Then you get volume, tone, so no three band EQ, and gain. And in terms of gain, it can actually crank. It doesn't really go into metal territory, I think, and the uh, EQ section doesn't allow for that, but it can definitely get some gain happening. Now, if we look at the more, it's actually even simpler because it's got volume and gain. And of course, since it's all tube, also t uh, uh, tube in the power amp, do we know what tubes are in that power amp? You don't know, right? No. <laughs> well, in the Houston Kettner, we got an EL84, and I would assume that we got the same thing in here. Actually, I cannot, I think it's an EL84. Yes, both of them. Um, yeah, 84, 83, 84. Eh, no, though, not, not the 34, it's the 84. Um, volume, gain, and you've got a high boost and a thin thing, thin and, thin and mellow. Well, we'll find out what that does. Also, no effects loop, and you can run 8 and 16 ohm speakers with it. Very small, but heavy, but very beautiful. Show it, please. The, um, the, uh, the case. It comes with a little carry case <coughs> with a strap on it. A strap on, huh? And, um... Very nicely padded, there's shit in here, cables. Um, so this is definitely a nice presentation and for a 200 watt amp, neat. I mean, that's definitely something that that I add as a big plus. Um, and the Houston Kettner also comes with a case. But we have to say that usually the Houston Kettner runs about, what, 350 something like that, 299 to 350 It's definitely usually more expensive. For some reason, it, it dropped in price. So it is not a completely fair comparison. So this 199 this is usually 349 but right now... 159 95 195 <laughs> So it's exactly in the same price range. And this puppy is 110 or 120 So it's a full head for... 110, 120? Yeah. And I mean, I love to get some head for like 110. What's the fun? Yeah, I hope so. You think you can get, get some good head for 110? No. No? Why did you order it then? I just want to try it. You want to try some head for 110? Yeah. <laughs> Kids nowadays. <laughs> so, and uh, this is the case for the Houston Kettner. You put it in sideways. I like to put in and... Uh, <laughs> God, I'm sorry. And um, also very, very nice. So I just like, you know, cases. So, being the case, um, Jux and Kettner, of course, cool. Looks like a nice top. You can grab it left and right. And um, it has a three-band EQ, which always makes an amp more flexible. Master and gain and actually a drive knob to push the gain even further. So this is, in terms of gain structure, the most flexible of the three. It has a red box out. Hughes and Kettner de developed the uh, red box, and that's a direct out if you wanted to, and it actually has a power soak on it, which means you could mute the speaker completely. It eats up all the power in, in heat, and you can only use the red box straight into your audio interface to record. Very nice, and if you're in the market for an amp like this right now, for the same price as the more it might be an option. But of course, as Dennis said, when I said, well, this has this and this and this and this and this, bottom line, how do they sound? Right? Yeah. So, um, the setup that we have here is uh, my modern needle. 
And I picked that not to brag, a little bit to brag, but um, it's my Modern Eagle 2. Yeah, I have one. Um, but I can actually coil tap and I have amazing single coil sounds and very nice Les Paulish, not quite Les Paul. Um, Humbucker sounds. I'm going into my whole pedal board that I built for the GEC9 from Moen and I'm going through the Morley Tripler so that I can pick each of the amps and they're all on and I can pick whichever one I want and Dennis is just gonna change the speaker cable in the back. Um, we're going through this Jet City because that is the setup that he's looking at and <coughs> um, we have a an in inexpensive Thoman that's, by the way, why he bought all this stuff, and then they're going to ship some stuff back, the bastard. <laughs> Let me test, you know, on Tormund's dime. Yeah, um, inexpensive uh, T-Bone ribbon mic, RM700, I think, and an inexpensive, of course, Shure SM57, and they're both running into Universal Audio 4710D preamp into an RME Fireface 800 going into Cubase 7.5 on individual tracks. And people complain about this whole setup. Well, you know what? I think it's important important so what do we start with do we start with the micro terror yeah why not okay it's plugged in so my first impression and i'm gonna i'm gonna put my two cents into it right away because for some reason you watch these videos for my opinion which might not matter really because every guitar player has a different sound. Every guitar player hears sound differently and whatever I present and however I record this is not everything this can do. It will change with different fingers. It will change with a different guitar, different mics, different speaker, different room, different music. Everyone will sound different with this. It is just a general direction, right? You will yeah. sound crappy with it because your guitar teacher was an, was an idiot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, then is actually... Good. He plays in a really cool band called Cronaspia. Right there. I produced them. Really, really cool guys. Have pretty much given everyone in the band lessons except for the drummer. Yep. <laughs> so, um, I think this of the three sounds the, let's call it the tinniest. Right? Tinny? A little bit boxy. It sounds... Oh, you, you mean like a little metal tin? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's especially clean. For me, pers that's personally, and I know I will get shit for this <laughs> in the comments. <laughs> you know those YouTube bastards. You suck! Your clean sounds horrible! Get a life! Someone actually wrote today, I would like to shoot the little beady-headed talking bastard in the head with an M1 carbine. What? <laughs> that's what someone actually wrote on YouTube. Okay. <laughs> he pointed out M1 carbine. That's very important. I think he really wanted to show that he knows his weapons. For some reason, I have beady eyes or something. Beady mm -hmm. eyes. So he wants to shoot me in the head for some reason. Just don't watch. <laughs> don't be an idiot. Of course. <laughs> when it comes to clean, I think orange is not where you go. No. No. <laughs> you know? It's like... Do you go to Marshall for clean warming? If you have an old plexi, it, it might it might work in some. But <coughs> we all know you go to you know Two Rock Sewer and of course Fender. There's different other there's other companies that do clean. Orange does dirt. It does grit. It does punk rock alternative. I don't give a flying rat's ass about amps. I'm just gonna get this because it's orange and cool, and because those people that play dirty crap play it. That's the yeah, that, see, that's why I ordered it. That's the attitude that orange players have, and that's a good attitude. Because then you play like this. If you're an asshole who doesn't care about shit, you play like an asshole who doesn't care about shit. And if you play that kind of music, you know, you, you want to... Do I think that's that song. No. Yeah. So, <laughs> clean, not the most amazing amp in the world. So let's test this. Single call. Very nasal. Let's check out what the tone can do. You you fiddle around with the tone. Okay. Try 
try to get the direct comparison. So let's get the volume down and get me the more. Okay. Please. When it comes to clean, the more can definitely crank more. It's it's I think the more is more direct. It yeah. feels feels more umfy and it has a lot more pressure. Yeah, it has more pressure and it's it's more present. I can feel the note a lot more. When it comes to let's say tone, I want to develop tone and really find out how do I form the the note with my fingers and that stuff. Huh? I've never tried that oh, before. Oh yeah, that's you know dynamics. I feel this is definitely for a different category of guitar player, maybe a different experience level, let's put it this way. This will definitely help you to feel the guitar more. Drier. Let's put it that way. It feels more dry than this. It feels more okay. direct. More just. It's more present. It's more here. Uh, fiddle around with the with the knobs. Oh, a lot fatter. Well, of course, if thin is what it says there, then not having it on thin would make it fat. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> There yet. So okay. Go back. Okay. So um, I really like how direct and how responsive it is. So we'll get the volume down and switch to the Houston Kettner. For me personally, again, this is just me. Houston Kettner has always been brilliant when it comes to clean sounds. Very transparent. Very beautiful high end. Um, I always thought it was horrible when you try to get them distorted because they're piercing and scratching. They're this beautiful high end that makes them sparkling and crystal clear for the clean is uh, horrible for the distorted. That was always my impression for use in Katniss that I played. But, what the fuck do I know? Really. So, we test this. Definitely cleaner and sparklier. -er -er. Can you feel that, that high shimmer? It feels, it might be that we feel that really high-end shimmer because this has more mids. If you have more mids, if you're fuller in the mids, mm -hmm. the high-end will not come out so clear. If you put a big hole in the mids, that high-end will come out. And when we're talking about mids, people are always like, No, it has mids! No, it has mids! Like, because I say the... Because <laughs> I say, that, for example, that Vox has kind of a hole in the mids. No, it has mids! Isn't this kind of a, a Vox? Remake? That's kind of a Voxy thing. Yeah. But what mids are we talking about? Are we talking about 400, 500 hertz, which is the warm kind of mids? Or are we talking about 1.5 to 3 kilohertz, where you have bitey kind of defining mids? Big difference. So right here, I'm talking about oops, the warm mids that this, I think, has a little bit more. Okay. <laughs> say for that kind of sound that's way cool there's dogs coming no. in and running around <laughs> totally distracting us here because my right. lovely girlfriend Leslie thought hey let's send the dogs on the guys who let the dogs out Leslie Tauber she did she lot she lot she lot the dogs out 
Yeah. Oh, oh, this is a very sexy microphone. Hello. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, I personally like this clean sound a lot. It's very spiky. Not bad. How good is it for pedals? We'll find out, huh? Yeah. Then again, you don't need clean, right? Because clean is for... Pussies. Ah, clean is for pussies. <laughs> Apparently clean is for pussies. Very nice, and humbucker. Okay, so let's look at the, while we're here, the um, EQ section, what we can do with it. Uh, give me the mids up and down and see what happens. I would think that's more around the... 900 to 1k range, roughly. Not that anyone really gives a flying shit. Give me high end up and down. Okay. Definitely makes this amp f more flexible in terms of sound sculpting than the other ones. Do, do the same for the bass while we're at it. actually more like where I think the orange is. You know, like very th lean, very thin yeah. in the low end. And um, so let's now go in the next stage. Should we wait for a second for them to get coffee? Because this is going to take a while. I mean, we're looking at three amps in depth because we don't just go over shit quickly here, are we? Uh, you know, they're on YouTube. They have a pause button. Do they? Yeah. I've never been on YouTube. You what? <laughs> go, go get away. Go get coffee or tea. So we're going to push the gain a little bit and see how they work with mid gain setting. Let's not forget for all of us who don't know shit. Since those two are tube heads, if you push the volume up, you're gonna drive the power amp. And then you have power amp distortion, which gets you a more, a less defined, wobbly kind of saturated sound. It's very fat, it's very wide and flat, like a cow pie. You know what a cow pie is? Cow shit, yeah. Okay. You know, flat and wide and blah. It's cow shitty. And for some sounds, you want that classic rock sound stuff yeah. like this, you know. If you want some, if you if you're playing that metal you talked about, yeah, yeah, I've heard about that. Okay. How do those metal singers always go? Yeah. No, they metal, go. Metal. can you do this? I don't know. <laughs> I have no air left in my brain. My fingers are completely numb. Whoa. That's, what's my name? <laughs> anyway, so for metal, you, you want a very responsive sound, which is why metal heads, metal heads, why metal amps have like 180, 100, 200 watts, um, because you want the power amp to not distort. So with a 5 watt amp doing precise metal, really not gonna happen if you're using the amp to distort, okay? But let's go into like a slight overdrive. Little bit, if I, I don't know if you can see that, little bit mids in, little bit treble in, bass down a little bit. Not 
not too shabby. I mean, you yeah. don't need this because that's a pussy sound. Yeah. But... <laughs> Let's try to get something similar out of the mower. So, switch the cable. So we get the volume in the middle. Mower immediately, and I'm not, has more um, noise, it's noisier. Yeah. But this might be, seriously, it, it might be because of the tripler and all the power shit that's going on here, so I wouldn't necessarily say that's the mower's fault, okay? Do you notice the difference? Yeah. How would you describe it? More powerful. It sounds more direct. Yeah. It sounds more powerful. I mean, this is this is good. Don't get me wrong. But when I want to feel the sound in my fingers, I want to be connected spiritually with the, with my sound. I feel that the more is more there. in general, right? Yeah. Very nice, because it was too fat, I think, right? for the more for mid gain and we switch to the orange piece which is kind of probably something that it does well how would you describe it how does it feel right now First reaction. Uh, in comparison to, um, to yeah. those two, mm -hmm. it feels kind of, I don't know, artificial. Yeah. I mean, it's a hybrid amp, okay? That's it's one thing you sacrifice, you the the liveliness of the sound. I hear it in the high end. The high end sounds rolled off. Okay. Do you hear this? Really? A little bit like, like a pillow is on top of the sound. Okay. Just a tiny little bit. Okay. Um, it, it's it's killer again we we have to consider the the prices and the size and all this but it is not the full tube experience yeah i think okay because it isn't the full tube experience yeah. it has a nice punch in the attack it feels yeah. good hmm. it's very it's very um, but the high end feels. I mean, I'm a snob now, okay? I mean, I'm playing the Sur and I'm playing very nice high end amps. So I know what it feels like to be really, really right in your sound and be connected to the note. And um, this. Ow! Mm. I hit my thumb! Um, this for me does it more than the other two uh, in terms of how you are connected to the sound. It would definitely be more Kettner and then the orange. Okay. Um, that's that's my verdict there. Now let's go to let's call it high gain. See how how high gain they can be. I think that's some kind of tube feedback. That's a negative right there for the orange. Oh, yeah. I think I kind of detuned my guitar.
horsey, you know? And always play flat nine. That's very important. metal but how well do you think this works for metal i don't know <laughs> how responsive is the sound is it right there uh no not no at all. it's i think this is a great tool for punky and green Dage kind of stuff yeah <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Even though that wasn't Green Day. But uh, not metalish. And um, I'm thinking for the price, almost, almost unbeatable. Uh, but a little bit tinny and not, as, I, as we said, the, not the full tube experience. Yeah. So let's crank up the more. I'm going to tell you right away, it's not crank upable. That's a word. Look it up. almost actually where we were right there I think a little bit more gain and we are definitely in the immediately the sound is just more here mm. so yeah. how far can we push this now we have to push the volume a bit more because we want to push the power amp tubes. It sounds, for riffing, I think it's got enough gain to be precise. It doesn't have the super high singing gain for lead sounds. Yeah. Um, but it can sound evil if you wanted to. And obviously, if you're pushing it, you know, like a normal human being. It's loud at home. Yeah, that's the thing. With the tube amp, if you want to push the power amp, that's what you gotta do. Yeah. Um, but obviously we haven't put pedals in front of these, so let's switch to the using Ketner and then quickly we're gonna try one or two pedals with each because every amp re reacts differently to pedals. And I know that the more does it incredibly well because, well, that's from the people who make the pedals. <laughs> now the using Ketner is the only one that actually has a drive button and we're gonna try this. But I already noticed that before as soon as you go into the drive mode the amp goes Wah! you know like a, like a, a snail or like a turtle yeah you spook it like and it goes Wah! that's how it feels it gets more drive but also the whole sound kind of seems to disappear back into the speaker so that whole openness isn't there anymore and the more has it of course you're not sitting in front of the speaker so you have no idea what we're talking about
clearly has the most gain out of the three amps. Oh, yeah. Without a question. But I feel that it pulls back. This might be absolutely fine for practicing at home, mm -hmm. no question. But we talked about this before we started the video. If you played a lead sound like this, wouldn't you want a delay on it? Yeah, always. Wouldn't you want a delay, maybe a little bit of flanging, that's kind of nice, flangy, flangy, flanging. Um, you want something on it. And since they don't have FX loops, you really wouldn't be able to use this high gain sound for affected lead sounds because you would have to put a delay in front of it, which will sound like ass. Delay in front of distortion doesn't work. So if you wanted to play a lead sound, you would have to use a pedal for the gain anyway, then the delay, and then go into the clean channel. So it's nice that it actually has a decent lead sound, but I'm not sure how usable it is to actually use it. Yeah, it feels like a little scr scratchy or sandy when, sandy. I, when I played it. Like a sandy vagina, but like sandy vagina. Yeah. You know, you know what it's like when you have sandy vagina? No. No? I don't know. <laughs> Everyone knows that. So let's see the clean sound we have. That's actually... Let's set up a decent uh, clean sound. A lot of high end in here, but that is Hughes and Kettner, that's where we are. I'm gonna turn on like an overdrive. That is a mobile Minotaur right now, coming out very soon. And let's see. Gets very thin. Yeah. Put more bass into it. Try it. Okay. Let's just go through more stuff. Here we have the Minotaur, and um, here we have. Well, that is the Milos Popovich. I love to say that. The Milos Popovich MP Custom Effects Gainiac Henning Edition, which is one of the most mind-blowing drives and distortion pedals on the market. And it sounds like complete ass with the Houston <laughs> Kettner 2 Master 5. I'm sorry, but that beautiful high end that I talked about, which is nice for the clean, is just not happening here. No, not at all. So, it just, that's... <laughs> Let's use a oldie but goodie, Exotic AC Plus. Not really great. Those were really not shitty pedals. Yeah. Minotaurs sounded very thin. And these just sound not so... Hmm. So, flexible like ass. Looks way cool. Nice shimmering high end for the clean. And more gain than the other two. Not sure how, how, how well it plays with the pedals, really. Well, let's go to the more. Again, the AC Plus. No, that's the Minotaur. Yeah, 
Yeah, we The most direct, right? Yeah. Most direct and most punchy. <laughs> We switch. Any more questions? No. Uh, what pedal were you using? That was the Milos Popovic uh, Ganiac. Oh, okay. <laughs> and um, that's the AC Plus again. <laughs> much uh, delay there. But which one plays well with with pedals? Yeah, obviously this one. Yeah. Should we even try this on the orange? Let's try it. Yeah, okay. Back to the Minotaur from Moval. Wow! There we go! I think we found our favorite. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I mean, sarcasm is kind of you know, in my blood. It, it rounds it off nicely because it doesn't have that high end. Yeah. The high end's gone, which is maybe neat. We'll try it with the... Clearly, the Milos Popovic Ganiac did not work with the Houston Ketner. As I said, the Houston yep. Ketners have a lot of high end. They have a lot of brilliance up there, um, which doesn't play well with other pedals, I think, yeah, other sounds. I think so. So the question is, what do you want? Do you want an amp that by itself can do distortion? Because that's what this does. Oh, yeah. But lead sounds really not, it's not gonna work with the delay in front of it. And we see if you put a delay and another pedal in front of it, <laughs> it doesn't work. It doesn't work even if you, if you roll off the high end completely. So I think this is, since it's in the same league as this, price wise, more flexible. It looks, I mean, it looks freaking awesome. <laughs> Using Ketner, however they do that, this is way cool. Um, but all the flexibility that the amp gives you, in itself mm -hmm. is lost if you can't extend it sound wise with pedals and other other things oh, yeah. so this isn't as flexible at first glance 
but it plays incredibly well with your board and your pedals and anything you want to put in front of it, which in the long run will make this a lot more flexible. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a great, let's call it practice tool. Yep. Cheap, looks way cool, it can get quite loud, it has some dirt, but it will always sound a little bit tinny, not so much, it's not so fat. Um, rolls off the high end a little bit too much for real work, let's call it that, I think. <laughs> um, to me, this feels like a grown amp. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? It feels like, for me, it feels like a full grown amp, just smaller, not quite so loud, but it's right there. And I have to admit, I'm a little bit attached to this because I actually have spent hours with it in China. I sat in the in, in, in the room for more uh, um, at, at the factory and tested a lot of pedals with this and I know it plays well with anything. You can put a metal pedal in front of this and drives and anything you want. It plays incredibly well with a wide range of different products. Cool. Okay. Um, I have to say I'm kind of tempted because this this has something. Yep. In clean. In, in clean, yeah. In pussy mode when it comes to Dennis, <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> but I think if you want to... If you want a metal sound, yep. you're going to have to use a pedal no matter what you do. Mm -hmm. Then it would most certainly be this because this feels like a full-grown amp. Oh, yeah. If you're looking for clean, slightly driven stuff and not a lot of fuss around it, I think the Usen Ketner for the price right now, because it received a great price reduction, is a pretty good choice. Mm -hmm. The speaker, in either case, for 100 bucks, I think is a very good choice. Oh, yeah. Um, I think this is for a, let's call it, lesser guitar player than you. Okay. More, more inexperienced, doesn't want to spend the money and doesn't have a feel for tone yet or that doesn't want to develop tone because I don't think he can do that with that. Okay. You have, you have to be able to feel the note yeah. and get get direct feedback from the amp as, as realistically as possible, which I think this does the most. This is a great practice tool mm -hmm. and I wouldn't mind having one. <laughs> Orange. I'm, I'm trashing the amp right now, but I mean, I don't think they're going to give me one. Uh, no, I don't think yeah. so. <laughs> but if you see this... I wouldn't mind, you know, checking out <laughs> your stuff, really. You see, we put a lot of shit, load of shit load of work into this. So, anything you want to add? We've been here for hours. <coughs> nope. <laughs> so, so I just want to find out um, which pedals I need to get to use this one properly. Uh, they, I can uh, uh, point you to a good channel on YouTube where you can see a lot of, you know, pedal reviews, professionally, professionally done. Okay. Yeah. So, um... Yeah, that's 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 no problem. I can, you know, I, I have a buddy who knows about pedals. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, but but would that be your choice? Yeah, probably. Which is sad because this does look fucking awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can put some blue LEDs into. into here. <laughs> now we're talking. <laughs> and some strippers on here, so. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well. Thanks for hanging out. <coughs> I don't think we can go any more in depth. Yeah. We could open them up and, you know, show you stuff, but who cares? <laughs> so, I'm going to see where the dogs are and my girlfriend and go on the couch. That's it from here, I think. Mm -hmm. So long. Yep, bye.